Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about self-taught developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, are there things that a software engineer can do, but a self-taught developer can't? No. That's probably my answer right there. No, there's, uh, it, it, I mean, of course it depends. It always depends. Because the thing is that just be, I mean, there is no, uh, there is no difference, guys. There's no difference between a software engineer and a self-taught developer. It's the same thing. For pra all practical intents and purposes, it's the same thing. The semantic difference between the two, uh, we can discuss those and we can, of course, say, be, pick an arbitrary difference, such as, let's say that we call a person who went to a university and have a degree in computer science, that's a software engineer. And someone who took, uh, learned by themselves how to do all the coding and so forth, that's a self-taught developer. But the thing is, guys, there's nothing in the university nothing that they're going to teach you that you can't learn on the internet literally nothing there are a lot of benefits to going to the university but like i've had i have so many videos about like the differences and so forth that and we're, we're not going to dive into that but like at, at bottom line is guys if you want to be a professional software developer it will be helpful for your chances in the start of things to have a computer science degree but there's a nothing that states that a self-taught developer can't learn all the things that someone who does software engineering or who is a, who went to a university uh, like you you can learn all the same things because the skills are all out there and the big dirty secret guys is that the stuff that the university kids are learning that's a fraction of what they need in order to survive in the industry the only thing that they usually have is a head start on the theory because there's a lot of theory and it, it depends on the university of course but uh, once you start working if you get into the industry and you do the same sort of work you will learn the same same things there's nothing magical about going to the university just as there's no secret boot camp out there that's gonna make you a superstar programmer who knows absolutely everything because it all comes it really all comes down to the same boring stuff that is always the determining factor which is number one how much are you gonna push how, how engaged are you how much are you gonna push yourself to learn all the things and uh, and be really really enthusiastic and like just continuously learning 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 practicing 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 that's number one number two is of course personal aptitude those the, the, these are the factors that determine most of it and I know for a fact that that is the case because I work with I've worked with so many people. I have everything from like I have I have junior coworkers today, where one dude is a he has a master's in it's either mathematics or computer science, and he went through like the, he's gone he went to the top universities in um, here in Sweden, and he has an education background that is. To die for on his on his CV, there's no discussion. He's basically a genius. And then I have this other this girl that I work with who is also a junior, and I trained her myself. I've trained both the, uh, both of these, and she outcodes him every single day of the week. She started. I, I as I recall, she started in the help desk at a hotel or something like that back in uh, when before she came and worked with us. And after two years, she was basically in charge of taking care of the uh, of uh, uh, like the web presence for that company, that specific hotel. If I remember correctly, I'm probably wrong, but uh, yeah. And then she started. She came to us, and I mean, I'm not gonna lie. She had huge, enormous problems learning like the theory about polymorphism and object-oriented programming and all of that stuff. But we went through it, and even to, like today, she's still not as like she she does not have this like same grasp of these concepts as this other guy but in terms of productivity in terms of like if i'm going to allocate a task i know that they're either both going to solve it or she might actually do it a little bit quicker it's really rare unless it's a really I mean, because we usually don't leverage the sort of mathematical prowess that this other dude has in any meaningful way so it doesn't really matter that he knows it because it's not useful to the company had he been a data scientist well maybe the whole different thing but then again you could have taught this girl if she really wanted to uh, this stuff as well and she would also be able to do it 
So no, guys. Uh, the reason why there is a semantic uh, that that there, this difference is made is usually because there is a enormous, like, just tons and tons and tons and tons of subpar developers who are self-taught, and that's the th that's why this prejudice is there in the first place, guys. The vast majority of developers who are self-taught don't have what it takes to be professional software developers. They don't. That doesn't mean that they don't have. Like it's it's simply because they they, they it, a lot of them believe that if they do just a bare minimum and learn some basics, now they're ready to start taking a job, and so they kind of flood the market. And the thing is, like most of them don't get jobs because they 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 don't have what it takes to be in the industry. But the self-taught developers who actually make the same sort of investment as the college kids are doing, they. They can. They, they quite a lot of them do get into the industry because it's not. You're. It's not exclusive. It's there's no exclusivity. Like you, you, they have to prove the same sort of things. It's usually easier in the beginning to get in if you have a degree, but it's not something that is a hard requirement. So if you have actually gone through the work and you sort, of, you know how to do the things that are necessary. There's no real difference between you and a software engineer, at least not from a productivity you should not from a productivity perspective or skill skill perspective not from anything that is meaningful to measure so what I want you to take away from this is that no there is no difference between a self-taught developer and a software engineer because at the end of the day there is nothing that you will learn in engineering college that you can't learn somewhere else it's a skill set. It's not a secret skill set by any means. It's not like the, like the like a some type of secret magical uh, voodoo or anything like that. There's no there's no trade secret, and you're gonna do the same job, and you're going to be paid to practically to mo in many cases you will find that you will work with both. You will work with people who are self-taught, and you will work with people who have a very fancy degree. And y I promise you, you will also notice that. In a lot of the times, you might see that yeah, some people are better than others, and sometimes there are there are people who are the reverse. Like sometimes you see that the star, the the people who are self-taught, uh, they confirm the prejudice that yeah, they don't really know exactly know all that much. And as in my case, you will see both, and I've seen both. I've seen the seen con I can confirm that there's a lot of self-taught developers who don't really know what they're doing. And I can also say that there's a lot of university kids who don't survive out of, outside of academia. Like they really, they were really, really good in the academic world, and they have a lot of brains, but they can't really do the job. And so that's what I'm saying, guys. There's no. I'm sorry if I if that, that's disappointing to you because there is no. There's no discernible difference if you have gone through the same sort of education and challenges and so forth. Question is though. Which one do you want to pick? Because if you take the college degree, it's usually easier for you in many cases to get into the industry than being a self-taught developer. So you might have to work a little bit harder as a self-taught developer in the beginning of things. But once you've made the investment, nobody's going to be able to make to tell the difference between the two of you. Have a great day.